How do you hear me, Cam? How do you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Doug? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, information Foxtrot, you can go ahead and put in uh, uh, Waukegan Tower. Okay, we've got gauges in the green. Uh, checking uh, the uh, reciprocating engines on aircraft have two independent ignition systems, each driven by a separate magneto. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking each magneto. One, two. I'm looking for an RPM drop of less than uh, seven percent. Two seconds. Professor, how do I change the Back position? to both. Okay, just a second now. Uh, one. Back to both. Okay, now uh, I'm going to check the carburetor heat. And I'm looking at the carburetor heat gauge as I pull this knob and I expect it to go up. I also expect my manifold pressure and RPM to drop a little bit. It's working well. I'm going to leave a little bit of carburetor heat on to leave it out of the yellow. Now I'm going to check the sprig clutch, that freewheel thing. The way I do that is I bring the RPM up a bit to 80. Then I'm going to chop the throttle and I expect my engine and rotor RPM needles to separate, which shows that the spray clutch is working. Here's 80. Chop the throttle, got good needle separation. Back to 70. So, uh... Elective is off. Now I'm going to engage the governor and uh, increase the throttle above 80 and if you watch the RPM gauges at the upper right you'll see it stabilize it uh, in that very narrow green band toward the top. Governor's on, rolling the throttle up, giving it a little left, uh, left pedal as I roll it up. Governor's got it. RPM stabilized. I'm uh, now going to raise the collective a little bit and I'm going to roll off the throttle to make sure our low RPM warning light is working. Collective's up. Rolling off the throttle. It ought to go off at 97%. It does. We're good to go. All right, pick up to a hover and then I'm going to call the tower and I'm going to request that we go out around that hangar and then take off to the west once we get past the hangar. So I'm pulling up on the collective very gradually, correcting for any yaw and lateral drift. Coming straight up. Okay, that's good. I'm looking at my manifold pressure to make sure we've got available power past the hover. We do. Uh, Kenosha Tower, helicopter 3014, terminal ramp with Foxtrot, take off to the west, depart to the south over I-94. Helicopter 014, hold your position. Helicopter 014, holding our position. Helicopter 014, departure will be at your own west, proceed as requested. Helicopter 014. All right, I'm going to uh, hover taxi, five feet over the ground, walking pace, over to where I'm clear of the hangar. Okay, here we go. Thirty-five knots. Level attitude to climb at sixty. Is this GoPro counting off? Yes, it is. Good. GoPro check. <laughs> All right. All right, now it's just before we get to 2,000 feet on the altimeter. I'm going to leave the collective pretty much where it is for now, and then I'm just going to drop the nose, and we'll speed up. And so I'm trading, basically trading uh, climb for airspeed. That's pretty clear. You can see Chicago pretty well. Yeah, I did not even realize it. This is the uh, city of North Chicago, kind of in here, and that from the from the.
the uh, that cluster of buildings, uh, neo-colonial buildings, around to the right. That's Great Lakes Naval uh, Naval Station. called a Vortac, about uh, five miles north of it, and there are a lot of airplanes that fly over the Vortac, so keep a very close eye now for traffic, and especially in that, everywhere, but in that general vicinity. It's right down there. Uh, I think I see it right there. Yep. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Another chopper going to the right there. Okay, okay. That's probably, that's almost certainly one of Trevor's helicopters coming back from a sightseeing tour. Because it looks to be red and both of his are red. Looking good. We still got plenty of fuel. Carburetor temperature is good. Got a pretty good view of him. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I see my apartment complex. Nah. Is that it right there, Came Straight ahead. The red one? No, it looks like it's blue. This one right here? Yeah, right there. Yep. Chicago traffic helicopter 014, Montrose Harbor, southbound over the lake shore, 2,000 feet, Chicago. Chicago traffic helicopter 014, John Hancock building southbound over the lake shore, 2,000 feet, Chicago. Okay, I need to cut over so I don't get into Midway's airspace. And I'm going to drop down to uh, 1,700. Damn, there's your building. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Trevor's heliport is kind of, uh, see that vacant area over there? That's where it'll be. Chicago traffic helicopter 014, just south of the Sears Tower, westbound 2, uh, 1,700 feet, Chicago. And the uh, Vertiport location is in that general vicinity, but I can't spot it. Oh, wait a minute. It's over here, and they've actually started construction. See the uh, see the white roof? See the rail yard where the rail lines are coming together? Yeah. There's a white roof thing with a bunch of air conditioners on it. It's just right. to the west of that. You can see the piles of dirt. Got it. Yep. Chicago traffic helicopter 014, United Center northbound 1700, Chicago. There's Wrigley Field. And um, water landings are actually more hazardous, even if you have floats. Really? I mean, if, if the pilot's properly trained and practices auto rotations, an engine failure shouldn't be that big a deal. And it tilts the lift vector uh, through a major part of the rotor. It tilt, tilts the lift vector forward so that it it actually applies torque in the same direction the engine would. Now that only occurs over part of the rotor blade, and another part of it generates lift in the usual direction. And so as you direction, so you can control the pitch of the rotor blade differently, like further out on the blade than on the. No, but. Because the velocity of the blade segment is the radius of that segment from the hub I times the RPM, okay. it varies along the span. off. So what'd you think? <laughs> that was great. Good. Thank you so much. Unbelievable. There you go.